<laughs> What's up everyone and welcome back to my channel. So if you're new here, make sure you hit that subscribe and that bell so you never miss when I upload. So, I wanted to follow up on my last video since Doja Cat has apologized twice since I posted that. She did do an iOS press release on Instagram and a 30 minute video and since her live was 30 minutes I want to try and keep this video concise so we will discuss in details the things that I mentioned in my last video. Now I think in the live is where she shot herself in the foot a little bit. So there are some things that I don't I'm not going to be here up over like I I do think this was genuine because I do think she did show her real personality so i feel like this is this is the type of an apology you get from someone like this now regarding the 4c hair comment there i felt like you should have just apologized for the wording you said f4c hair you should have went back and said you know what i apologize for my wording and anyone with 4c hair that i've offended what i meant to say by that is that i have 4c hair and i have no idea how to properly manage it and take care of it because i grew up with a white mother and no one was in my circle to teach me how with the thing about the photos being lightened, I understand editors do lighten photos. I'm not going to, like, beat you over the head about that. Editors in the industry love to lighten skin tones. But I feel like, like you are now aware that you need more control in that area. I will give it to you that it is true that all types of people come in and out of chat rooms. And I think one of those people just happens to be an incel that exposed you. I did appreciate you clarifying what your words exactly were in the video. But I have some more comments on your wording and why you chose to use it in that scenario, so we'll get to that later. I'll also say that it was brought to my attention that the Arab tweets that I posted in my last video were false. So I understand you not apologizing for that and just clarifying. So since it came from you that these are false tweets, I will admit that I posted a false tweet in my video. I'm also not going to crucify you for dating white men. I understand you're mixed. It doesn't surprise me if you're attracted to white or black men. And even if you're not mixed, I feel like you have a right to date whoever you choose, but within reason, like no children and shit or weird shit like that. The last thing that I'm not going to go too hard on you for is that you did admit that you should not have assumed that people understand your sense of humor. Now, I agree with this 100% because your tone doesn't always translate well when someone is reading it. So... You, if you're tweeting something, especially that you would show your boobs, which was unnecessary in the beginning, and someone else is reading it, they can't tell whether you're joking or not, especially if you're gunning so hard to get a number one song. All right, so let's get into what I really didn't care for. If you wanted to be genuine with your fans, then you would have skipped over the cookie cutter iOS press release. Like you wouldn't have started off this video by trolling people, talking about you weren't hiding, like you weren't gone for three days before releasing this video. You also had bullet points, but still took 10 minutes to talk shit instead of just addressing the rumors, which is the whole reason you got on live. You also didn't need to tell us how many versions you recorded because now I just feel like you're well rehearsed. This sounds like a bunch of ex excuses and not an apology because you've had so many times to record it and play it over and fix your wording. What you should have said was I spent the last few days very remorseful trying to figure out how to sincerely apologize to my fans. Period. Now, says on my bullet points, didn't do nothing. Uh, this is in no way, shape, or form an order uh, of what's most important to what. But it's there, so I'm going to talk about it. Um, so I made a song. I think it was 2015, but that's irrelevant. Um, and it has a very offensive term in it. Um, and it shouldn't be used, period. Uh, I'm going to start with, I'm very sorry to anybody who's taken offense, to anybody who's to anybody who's who I've hurt, who I've hurt, uh, using this term. Um, when I used it, it was because I was in chat rooms all the time and I was kind of locked away and I was always on there just dealing with people coming at me left and right, talking about different slanderous terms after another. The term that I used in the song uh, is one that I learned that day. So people were calling me at left and right, left and right, and I used it in a song. And it was to kind of take back and, and fucking just say fuck you to those people. The song, however, I agree 
the worst, maybe the worst song in the entire world. Not good. Lyrically, lost. The worst song. The lyrics in the song don't make sense. Um, I see some of the interpretations of the lyrics. A lot of them are wrong. Uh, I can rewrite the lyrics for you guys. I don't know how important that is. Um, but if you need me to, I can. Uh, but that song is in zero ways, in no way connected to police brutality or Sandra Bland. Offer to rewrite did do nothing that was unnecessary. It sounded snarky and it overshadowed the fact that you were trying to say that this song was a horrible mistake. You could have left all of that out because one, you said the song was offensive, you apologized for it, you said it wasn't mocking police brutality or the death of Sandra Bland, you also said that the song didn't make sense. So why would you then go back and say, well I can rewrite it if you want me to? To prove what? It shouldn't have been made in the first place. It's like you, you couldn't even say that you didn't know what it meant because you admitted that this was an offensive term used against you that you learned from these chat rooms that you were going in. So honestly, for me, it's hard to convince people that this isn't a racist chat when you admit it to knowing it was a derogatory term because it was used against you by trolls. And from what I'm hearing, I don't know, I've never been on Tiny Chat, but someone could can probably confirm in the comments. These chats are supposed to be labeled. You had to know what you were getting yourself into. And, okay, let me give you a little bit of slack. So understanding that every platform does have racism, you continuously went to a platform that you said yourself runs rampant because it is unmonitored. When instead, you could have just engaged with a different social platform if it meant that much to you to connect with people online. But no, instead you stay in the chat room, you make a song out of the term that you admit doesn't make sense instead of leaving the chat room, and it sounds insane to me. I can't 100% buy this explanation because you were recently in those chat rooms. For white supremacists, um, I am going to start with the chat room that I go to is a public chat room. It's uh, me, my friends, you go in there. Now you have to pay $30 to get into the chat room, which is a new thing. Um, but I used to go in there for free. And I learned, you know, that there are racist people who come in and out of the chat. They're, they're there. They, they happen and then they're banned. The, I, the, the idea that this chat room is a white supremacist chat room is, I, I don't, fully i don't understand it in any way and it not even full i just don't understand how you know what i do understand is that there is racism that happens across tiny chat and there is racism that happens across instagram there's racism that happens across twitter this shit happens everywhere it just happens more on tiny chat because it's not as monitored. So when you see racist shit on tiny chat, it's because people aren't paying attention. People, there are mods that are idle. Um, the next thing is race play. Clip that you see me where I was, and yes, this is me 100% fucking excusing my dumbass behavior. I'm dumb, but I'm also drunk, but on the other side of things, I can, I can be concise, I can be clear, I can speak, I know how to speak. I'm very, I, I am smart, but I'm also kind of a dumbass. In this video, I'm being completely fucking blackout drunk and completely fucking dumb. I have turned off the, the smart switch in my brain, and this is where I'm saying, shut the fuck up you and then i say hard r the n word now they thought that i was saying and maybe some of you thought that i was saying uh call me the hard r n word i'm in no way into race play you never really address why you showed your ass in the chat room and i can put the picture back up you focus your being in the chat room on it not being a racist chat and that this was just a public chat room you were in with your friends getting drunk 
and saying whatever. You did not address the rumors that you were showing your bodies in these chat rooms to get your song to number one. I'm also not convinced that you weren't engaging in some type of race play. Web then we got to get into you saying the N-word in this chat room and you blamed it on being blackout drunk. So I've always been told that a drunken tongue speaks the truth. So you felt comfortable enough in that situation to use the N-word and with the hard ER in that environment to prove what? What was, what was the purpose of that? That doesn't sit well with me. We have a lot of time. We're on quarantine. We have, we have so much time to sit in bed. If you're not an essential worker, if you're a essential worker, thank you. Thank you so much. If you're not an essential worker, good luck, motherfucker. And you're trying to make me look like shit on the internet? Good luck, motherfucker. You have nothing else to do. I understand. You have fun. You do that shit. Now coming at people who weren't essential workers, saying they were trying to destroy you, you started that with a good luck motherfucker. Let me tell you why that was poor timing. So many people are losing their jobs because of this pandemic and because they're not essential workers. So you saying good luck motherfucker makes you look really bad while you are trying to apologize. Beyonce TikTok. I saw something about how people thought that I was coming for Beyonce. Beyonce is one of the driving forces of who I am in my career. Beyonce is undeniably talented. In every fucking time anyone has ever came for Beyonce, I was there. And that's all I have to say. When you talked about the Beyonce TikTok, I didn't even really clarify why you made it. That's probably my only issue of what, what was the point of altering her name in that situation. Next fucking bullet. Not showing my boobs. So, I told people on Twitter that I was going to show my boobs to them real hard, quote unquote. Um, that's my sense of humor. My mistake was thinking that everyone was going to understand my joke. I don't give a fuck about a number one, okay? I don't even know what that means at this point. Having a number one is, is you have a number one, and that's it. Maybe people buy you fucking, I don't know, they give you sneakers. You were going, you shouldn't have even offered to show your boobs in the first place. Because people are crazy. You are a grown woman. You know everyone's not right in their head, especially on the internet. So you literally said, if Say So goes number one, I'll show my boobs real hard. Then you act like you don't care to have a number one song or what it means in terms of having a milestone in your career as an artist. So I don't buy that. Like, I do want to reiterate that the purpose of this video was not to pick apart every syllable she said, but to really focus on the parts that I had an issue with that I felt were unanswered from my last video. So, so let me know what you guys think in the comments. Was this a sincere apology to you? Do you buy it? Did you have issues with some of the things she said? Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and tell a friend to tell a friend. And I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye-bye.